Well, winter is coming and you might find yourself in a cold snap at some point. Even if you're trying to escape the cold and run as fast as you can to the warm air, dry air of Arizona down in the desert. We're not doing that at all right now. <laughs> you might still come across a cold snap that's going to land you in the 20s overnight. Don't panic. We have some tips to help you stay warm and keep your rig safe without spending any extra money on a bunch of gadgets. Welcome back to No Ordinary Path. My name is John. This is my beautiful wife, Kristen. We are sitting inside of Dorothy, who is our 44-foot toy hauler. We are a family of five. We got three kids hiding out in the back, plus doggos. Yes. I am a travel nurse, and we go all over the United States taking travel nurse contracts and living the life. Yes. I'm not actually crying. I have like some like allergies, allergies going on because fall allergies. we're like back in the Midwest, and so I'm like... <laughs> Did you like that sound? Yeah, it was kind of gross. <laughs> it was kind of gross. Okay, we are on our way back to Phoenix, but first we're going to be stopping in Kansas City to visit some family. Yep. And so we kind of like blitzed as fast as we could from Massachusetts down to Kansas City. And we're kind of like in the Springfield, Illinois area, I think right now. Anyhow, we just found out, both of our parents called us and they were like, hey, it's going to be really cold while you're here. I just want you to know the overnight, no, overnight lows are going to be in the 20s. Which is exceptionally <laughs> ironic because as we left Massachusetts, everybody was like, it is so crazy, unseasonably warm right now. It was November and we were like, people were still wearing shorts and all yeah. that stuff, which is not the case. Usually by October and Halloween, it's getting pretty cold there. Yeah. But it was, it was still really, really nice and, and it's been nice so far. Yeah. So there are three main categories of things that we have to think about when we're trying to make sure that we stay warm. And that is keeping ourselves warm, first of all, which actually ironically is the easiest part of the whole process. Um, keeping heat inside the RV and not letting it escape. And then also protecting our underside, which includes like the tanks and the pipes and all of that stuff. That's right. And since we aren't going to be staying for an extended period of time, we're only going to be there for what, three nights, four nights, yeah, like maybe? four nights total. Uh, we're not extremely concerned about our tanks totally freezing, but we're gonna give you the rundown of like what we would do in each of those categories to stay warm and protect our rig. That's right, this video is not like a long-term winter solution. In fact, we've made a video like that. You can check it out up here. But this is for those of you that are just like us that are traveling, blowing through some place you're going to be where it's cold for just a few nights you don't want to do a whole lot of craziness you're not skirting the rv mm -hmm. you're not doing any of that you're not staying somewhere for the entire winter you just yeah. got to deal with the cold for a brief period of time to protect yourself your rig and all the things inside of it yes so the first thing is keeping yourself warm this one's the easiest uh, bust out all the extra blankets that you have first yep. of all sleep with your dog if you need some extra <laughs> it's heat. a one dog night or two dog <laughs> night or maybe a three dog night yes depends on how cold it gets <laughs> she makes a really great heater that is important to think about too because we do often like you know bundle up and have blankets and stuff on the beds and that kind of stuff remember your doggos or your cat or whatever animal you may travel with also needs somebody to help them keep warm too strongly advise get, having hookups if you can possibly have hookups yes you can boondock in the cold we've done it before for us it was not an enjoyable experience <laughs> there are extra things that you can do in order to make boondocking work in the cold but we're going to say for this video if you can find yourself some hookups somewhere so that you have continuous power or at least electricity yeah. in any way shape or form yes even if it's just moon mooch knocking off of a 110 in somebody's house that may be all you need to make the major difference right so with the electricity then you can heat your rig and you want to make sure that your propane is nice and topped off <laughs> after you keep yourself warm then you have to figure out how to not lose the heat from the inside of your rig because it it will seep out from like every nook and cranny of your rv so if you don't have like plastic that you can put over the windows that's fine you can just make sure that your blinds are closed and then you can use blankets that you rolled up to like sit down here so that you can try to seal it in or at the bottom of where your slides are if there's any patch that is exposed to the outside for any reason make sure that that's kind of like blocked off and another great thing you could do is use pillows like this and pop them up into your vents if you don't have reflectics on you that's okay you don't need it most of the heat loss actually goes up through those vents because as heat rises it goes right through the roof and that is an area that is super easy like you said to take that just shove the pillow up there if you can't get it to stay a quick strip of duct tape because everybody's got some of that will hold it <laughs> and that's all you need for just a night and you'd be surprised how much of a difference that will make 
literally hang up blankets and towels. I mean, if, if it's going to be a really cold night and you're only going to be there for a little bit, mm -hmm. honestly, the windows and the vents and stuff, anywhere that there's air that's going to escape, cold air is going to get in, heat's going to get out. And then lastly, which is the one that I think everyone really is curious about, is how do you protect the underbelly and your pipes from getting too cold? Mm -hmm. Propane furnaces in an RV run off of the 12 volt system, right? The battery system that you have. So that if you are boondocking, you can run that. But cold will also seep the batteries really, really, really quickly. So if you're plugged in, even if it's to just a 110 volt, that will still keep those batteries charged up. So as the furnace and the blowers use all that battery power, it keeps the batteries warm because the cold really will deplete them. So having that furnace running in the underbelly will keep most of the tanks warm. If you have uh, heated tanks, obviously heat those too. Another good tip is to make sure that your tanks are full. Did you mention that already? No. Mm -mm. Make sure that your tanks are pretty full because the, the more the fuller they are, the less likely they are going to be to freeze. Another really great tip is just to make sure that you have your hair dryer on hand. <laughs> if you need to thaw something out, a hair dryer is very helpful to do that. <laughs> yeah. Guys, don't let it stop you from getting out there. It is scary. Everybody's worst nightmare is to have pipes and stuff break. The nice thing about an RV is most of the plumbing inside of it is made with PVC and those actually can stretch just a little bit. It's not good for them to do so, but again, we're talking about a pinch. This isn't long, long-term right. winter boondocking. So if something does happen and they do freeze over, we've had our pipes freeze before in previous RV mm -hmm. that we had, and it did not break or rupture anything or cause any leaks or anything like that. Yeah, no. So you can thaw it back out. Like yeah, said, I was gonna yeah. say the biggest, the biggest hang up with that was if we had to wait a few hours during the day when the sunshine was out so that we could use our water again, yep. <laughs> which was a pain in the butt, but it didn't rupture anything, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And another thing to keep in mind is that it would require several days in really low temperatures in order to fully freeze your yeah, system underneath. Absolutely. So if, if you're, you're gonna, gonna yeah. Yeah, if it's gonna be one night where the temperature hits like 30 degrees, probably not that big of a deal that you have to worry about it that yeah. much, especially if you have a full tank. Yeah. Lastly, one of the other things you can do on the inside is to fill up some jugs full of water when you have water that's flowing, because in the event that it does freeze, you need to use a toilet in the morning, you want something to flush that toilet down with. Tell us about the hoses outside. What do you wanna make sure Well, and so, I mean, they make really fancy hoses that you can have for, again, that long-term boondocking that are heated. You can get heat tape and wrap do it around a regular that? hose. But what I'm saying and my suggestion is just fill the fresh water tank. Unhook the hose, unhook it from the water source, turn the water source off, make sure everything drains out of that hose and you can just leave it sitting outside or you can store it away. Your fresh tank is what's gonna be inside that's gonna be heated so that you don't have to worry about the, fro the, the hose freezing up and all the piping freezing. Yeah. Well, I hope that these tips have helped you guys. We're going to keep this short and sweet because we are in transit. <laughs> and we have a lot of content still coming out from New England. That's going to be airing for the next couple of weeks. Yep. But we'll probably pepper in some Real Talk Tuesdays like this one that are a little bit more real time. Right. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you're staying nice and warm out there. And we look forward to getting back to sunny Arizona and bringing you some more content from there. Right. Thanks, Thanks for guys. watching. See you out there.